Pardon me. Hello everybody, this is Intrepid83 and welcome to Let's Play Final Fantasy X HD. Before we get into the game here, I uh, just want to go over a few things. First of all, as far as what do I hope, hope to accomplish uh, through this playthrough, and simply put, I will be going after the ultimate weapons, I will be completing the monster arena, and I will be defeating all of the Dark Aeons as well as the as well as what that doing that unlocks so yeah and uh yeah so i think that's probably all i need to get into so <laughs> for now anyway and uh, we'll uh, deal with any other uh, issues that come up uh, well as they come to me so all right let's get started this is the playstation 3 version of this game so yeah uh, there was a, a time uh, a short while ago when i was actually thinking I may end up doing the PC version, but no, things worked out with my, my uh, capture card. Those who uh, follow me on Twitter or who uh, keep up with me on Twitter know, have an idea of what happened on that with, in that regard, but uh, in any case, things worked out and here we are. So, character advancement system selection. Select a sphere grid to use. Standard sphere grid or expert sphere grid. All right, so as far as leveling up in this game, your characters advance on a, uh, a grid, so to speak. And basically this just allows you to choose which grid you want to use. The standard sphere grid, I believe, shipped with every version of the game uh, and it's on its initial release. And the expert sphere grid, I believe, only shipped with the uh, international version, the European version of this game. So I believe all nodes are, are uh, you know, with a maxed out sphere grid in the expert ex at the expert sphere grid, I think you end up with a weaker character overall, like a slightly weaker character. However, you do have the option of taking any character down any route that you choose. So it's a very, it's a lot more customizable than uh, this one. But definitely, if this is your first time through, it might be unless you like the extra challenge of uh, figuring out who you want to do what kind of thing, you can go that route. But uh, for the most part, most people will choose the standard sphere grid and. Uh, I want to try and keep this playthrough as duplicatable as possible. And uh, so with that being said, I guess we're going with the standard sphere grid. And you have selected the standard sphere grid. You cannot switch grids in game. And this is this the one you want. Yes, it is. So yeah, once you choose this, you cannot go back unless you decide to restart the game. So yeah. All right, let's go. <clears throat> And for those who may be uh, sensitive to this kind of stuff, because I know I am in some situations, uh, as far as cutscenes go, uh, you know, whether they're in-game cutscenes, like uh, in-game renders like this, or, you know, full motion video cutscenes, uh, I will be attempting to stay quiet during those. So, because, well, simply because I like to keep the focus on the game and the story it's trying to tell. Uh, so, yeah, that's generally what I like to do around here. So if you're sensitive to people talking over uh, cutscenes and that kind of stuff, I, uh, I hope I can uh, put your mind at ease as far as that goes with that. I can't think of anything off off the top of my head of where this might apply, but if there's something very important as far uh, for uh, gameplay wise or uh, strategy wise or anything like that that I feel I need to mention during a cutscene, um, I may say it then, but I, I quite honestly cannot think of anywhere where that would apply. So yeah, where I wouldn't get a chance afterwards or before or anything like that. So. Listen to my story. This may be our last chance. And that is one of the big reasons why I want to try and keep quiet during cutscenes because this game is indeed voice acted, so yeah.
All right. Let's see, we got a bunch of fans here. All right. Hey, guys. Can you sign this? No problem. And indeed, I will be sticking with the uh, canon names, Titus in this case. I used to call him Titus, and uh, I may switch back from back and forth here and there, uh, just simply out of uh, you know force of habit kind of thing. But I've actually got posted in the video description a, uh, a link to uh, one of James Arnold Taylor's voice uh, videos, uh, the voice actor for Titus here, and he explains how he learned uh, to say. Titus's name versus Titus and it's actually a really cool story really cool video as well a really good video uh, as well to take a look at but uh, if you want to hear the story behind why it's pronounced Titus instead of Titus uh, then you can you can go take a look at that um, but yeah uh, the uh, the short of it is simply because I believe Titus was the first publicly announced way to uh, uh, say the name so yeah Alright, Titus it is. Alrighty. Me too! <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah, it kind of remind like the the way it, it had happened, it kind of reminded me of the uh, when the Olympics were in Italy and the, the Turin Olympics. How some some people called it Turin, other people called it called it Torino, that kind of stuff. So yeah. Alright. Talk to some of the people in the back. Are you gonna show us that shot tonight? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Maybe. You should do it for us. I guess it really depends on what shot she's talking about. The jet shot. I'll be waiting. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Anything else? No. All right. What about you, little guy? The game tonight. It's very important. Absolutely. The game tonight. Oh. Hey, how are you feeling? Great as ever. Thanks. Yeah, we're cheering for you. You're Jack's son. I'd be crazy not to cheer for you. <laughs> what about you? I, I've been a, a big fan of yours from the very beginning. I won't let you down. Thanks. Oh, thank you. How about you, sir? Oh, thank you. How about you, little guy? How are you? Oh, well, thanks. I was wondering about you, but... Alright, ladies, how's it going tonight? Can I have your autograph? Of course. Good luck tonight! Nothing to worry about. Oh, if I score a goal... I'll... Uh, do this. That will mean it was for you, okay? <laughs> what seat? He's walking the front row! Fifth from the right! Got it. Right, just keep that in mind. Thank you for the autograph! No problem. Can I see you after the game? Sure, why not? Great! I know this great place! Hmm, I wonder if sushi might be involved. I haven't had sushi in a long time. <laughs> Alright. Well, gotta go. Cheer for me. Two, three. She just had a blitz! Hey, I, I got a game to play. Then teach us after. Maybe tonight? Um, you know. You can't tonight. I mean, tomorrow. Promise? Promise. Because we've got a date tonight. <laughs> wow, look at that sunset. It's a shame it's being blocked by all those uh, buildings. <clears throat> I was
was in a coffee shop running away from home when I heard the news. Our hero, checked, gone, vanished into thin air. <laughs> My dad must have been his biggest fan. I knew how sad he'd be. Heck, we all were that day. Zanara I says to myself, what are you thinking? I went running straight back home. We sat up talking about Jack all night. My dad and I never talked so much. Whoa. Didn't mean to reminisce, folks. Anyway, ten years later, the Jack Memorial Cup tournament is today. The two teams that have won through to the finals are, of course, the Abes from A East and the Duggles from C South. I know there's a lot of people out there today to see the star of the Abes. In just one year, he's become the team's number one player. He's Jack's blood and the new hope of Blitzball. What kind of super play will he show us today? Will we see his father's legendary shot? I don't think I'm the only one excited here, folks. So yeah, if you manage to talk to that uh, girl running, around, girl in pink running around, she'll give you, and you give her tickets, she'll uh, give you two potions. Well, maybe you should go home then. Nothing beats the shivers like a nice warm bed. Now well, with all these waterfalls around, I can imagine that it probably cools the air off a bit. So yeah, maybe get upwind of them or something. Maybe that'll help. Oh, thanks. I'm sure I've got some time still. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe sometime. Oh, there's a third one here. <laughs> well, I'm sure your own dad's uh, great in his own way. best. Alright, anybody else? No? Just... Right. Let's see if we can catch up to those kids. Along the way. Make Whoa. way, make way! Hey. Coming through, sorry. <laughs> Let me through. Uh. Hey, I'm gonna be late. Yeah. Hey, let go of me.
What was that? You guys all right? Shock. What is going on? We under attack or something? Some unknown alien force? Alrighty then, <laughs> kind of surrounded here, but the one thing about this specific battle in this game, there are things called overdrive modes. What an overdrive is, we'll learn shortly. But overdrive modes, this is actually one of the first op uh, par points in the game in which you can actually grind for some. Um, I'm actually, I think you can actually get up to eight separate overdrive modes, uh, four for each of the... Uh, Orin and Titus here. Uh, however, I'm only going to go for probably only go for uh, well, one for Orin and two for Titus here. Uh, it should only take about 25 minutes. So basically, what happens here? I'll have uh, the instructions listed in the video description of uh, uh, Jeff different um, ways you want to go about this. But basically, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we want to attack the ones behind us. Every time you kill an enemy, it adds one to a counter that leads you to an overdrive mode called Slayer. And as long as you keep killing enemies behind you like this, that first attack we received from them is the only attack we will ever receive from this group of enemies. 
So basically, after 80 kills, Orin will learn his Slayer Overdrive mode. And once that happens, we'll uh, get into that once I get there. And Orin has learned the Slayer Overdrive mode. Alright, so now that we've got that taken care of, uh, two ways you can do this. You can have Titus and Orin attack him to KO him. Or you can have the just Orin attack himself and then Titus continue on killing the uh, Sin Scales behind us. But I uh, figured this will be a bit quicker. Oops, didn't want to do that, but yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a drawback of intentionally trying to hit yourself, but uh, <clears throat> hit somebody else in the party. And that's why. There we go. Alright, with that, now all we need to do is get to Slayer for Titus here. Now that Titus is alone, however, every. I guess every turn, I guess you could say, will we'll be killing us in scale. That'll add one to the Slayer counter for him, but also the fact that he's the only one st in the party standing, it'll actually, every turn, will add one to his uh, counter for the Loner Overdrive mode. So I'm going to uh, take care to uh, get uh, the Slayer and, Overd uh, Slayer and Loner Overdrive modes here for Titus, and I'll be back now when I... Well, when I get Slayer and when I get uh, Loner. Slayer shouldn't be too far uh, too far uh, behind here, so uh, yeah, I'll be back with Slayer and then uh, we'll, uh, get to show you a quicker way to get to Loner, I guess you could say. Alright, there's two just learning Slayer. It's only probably been, like, been a couple of minutes since the last time I got off. Uh, I left off with you guys. Now, to get quicker way to get Loner, just hit the triangle button to defend. And this will let you uh, go through your turns a bit quicker. And there's Loner. Now one thing occurred to me while I was doing this, that uh, the fact that Titus is now in critical HP, uh, that I was actually adding to his counter to uh, um, get his Daredevil overdrive mode. So yeah, that's one of the other ones. The other, so obviously we got Slayer for Orin, Slayer for Titus, Loner for Titus. You could get Loner for Orin. That's another, that's one of the optional uh, things I listed in the video description. Then there's the uber optional uh, grind, which gets you Slayer, Loner, Warrior, and Daredevil for all four of them. So basically just put everybody in critical status and then just basically go about it kind of thing. Uh, Slayer and Warrior kind of charge up at the same time because in order to use Slayer, you got to damage an enemy. In order to learn Warrior, you got to damage an enemy. So yeah. All right, so we revived Orin there, so let's just... Uh, Take care of the uh, Sid Spawn in front of us and uh, keep moving forward. Seems like Orin, is no Orin knows what he's doing, so probably the best bet just to stick with him. But yeah, all in all, that took me about roughly about 25 minutes to complete. Uh, took about 16 minutes to get uh, Orin's first overdrive, and after that they just kind of come snowballing. And here's the overdrive tutorial. When a character's overdrive gauge beneath the HP MP display is full, so that's what the, the yellow and orange bars are below the names, those are the overdrive gauges, turns orange when it's full. Uh, that character may use a special unique at attack once. Press left on the D-pad in the command, man command window to use an overdrive. So, yeah, we don't have much choice other than to do so right now, so let's use Bushido and Dragon Fang. Now, when you do, do this for orange overdrives, he'll you'll be prompted with a, a series of uh, button presses on the controller. If you uh, input it correctly in the time allotted, uh, he'll do a bit more damage. Uh, if you don't do it in time, he'll still do, still do damage, but it'll be a weaker attack. So let's see if we can do this. 
And this one hits. Oops. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> yeah, hits all enemies. Ooh, we got an overkill there. Let's take care of the sin, sin scales now. Let's take care of the, whatever the heck this thing is. I guess the, I think this is what was shedding all those scales. Keeps hitting us with the demi there. You notice every time we hit him for hit him for about multiples of a hundred, he'll lo he loses uh, some uh, tentacles on top there. Uh, that's basically how you can tell uh, how much HP HP he has left. So if, uh, every hundred, each one of those uh, tentacles or, or antennae, I guess you could say, uh, it's a fair guess that they were they're worth about a hundred HP each. So it looks like Titus is ready to unleash his overdrive as well. So let's. Might as well do that with him. Alright, so as far as Titus goes, sword play, he's got spiral cut. This one will come up with a, uh, a bar with a, uh, a gold uh, section in the center. Basically, it'll have a, an indi indicator. If you stop the indicator right in the center of the, in that gold area, uh, he'll do more damage kind of thing. So basically, that he'll successfully uh, complete or successfully I want to say initiate, but that's not the right word. Um, if you do it successfully, you'll do more damage. If you if time runs out before you're able to do it, he'll still do the attack, but it'll be weaker. So yeah. So in this case, let's give it a shot. Try to stop it in the uh, gold slot. There we go. And I think we won. Yes, we did. Alright, looks like these scales have gone dormant, so... Is that a good sign? Can Orin and I save Xanarkin from what looks like... Look, like looks like destruction? Total destruction? Who knows, but can we save Xanarkin? I guess we'll have to find out next time. This is Intrepid83 signing off. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit like, share, and subscribe. Uh, likes mean more people can uh, find it and enjoy it as well. Uh, subscribing allows you to keep up to date with any other videos I uh, upload. And also remember to enable notifications in that regard as well, so you can be notified when I upload the next video. And also, if you are subscribing for the first time, welcome to our community, and I hope to enjoy it. I hope you uh, join us on this journey through Final Fantasy X. And as far as comments go to everybody, I would ask that you please do not post any co any spoilers in the comments section. Uh, believe it or not, there are still people who have never experienced this story before, and if you're a fan of the game, we probably all are for the same reason for the story. Um, yeah, please don't spoil it for them, the same way it wasn't sto spoiled for you the first time you went through, uh, played through, so yeah, please do not post spoilers. Uh, if there are any spoilers are seen, I will delete them as soon as I see them, so yeah. In any case, uh... Don't forget to share this with any fr friends or family if they're into the same, watching the same kind of stuff on YouTube or watching just watching the same kind of stuff. And if you're interested in keeping up to date with any channel updates, you can always check my feed at twitter.com slash intrepid83. Take care, be blessed, and have a good one. And in case you're wondering what I'm standing in front of here, this is called a save sphere. This is Traveler's Save Sphere Level 1, stores a record of your travels, also fully restores your party's HP and MP. So yeah, anytime you see these, it's usually a good idea just to, just to even if you're not going to save it, access it and it'll uh, heal you up kind of thing. So yeah, in this case, let's save it. And then uh, we'll continue on uh, after Orin next time.